What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Spaghetti Incident's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Masterpiece Barricade. I'll talk to you about the Spaghetti Incident after the final thoughts and a little story time with Skullface. But before we get to that, we have to talk about this accessory. We're just going to look at it real quick. We're going to look at it more in robot mode. Um, wowzers. <clears throat> I couldn't find any way to incorporate it into vehicle mode, but that's not to say there isn't a way. So right out of the box, I'll tell you, it has a nice weight to it. We have some nice detailings with the police sign and the the whole, you know, it has the punish to enslave, all that bit. And all the Tampa paint, license plate paint, this paint up here, this paint up here. No finish on it, so that's a bit of a bummer. But it does look uh, fairly, fairly good in, in vehicle mode. Rolls like a champ. We got the wheels murdered out. And there are plastic. They are plastic, rather. Got the front bumper here, the little uh, protector piece, and, and so on. Clear, translucent windshields, which is probably not the best choice for this guy, just because it lets you see all the inner bits and doesn't help really sell it. But other than that, it's pretty good. And there it is with Tiger Tracks. Transformation-wise, you have to kind of split all this apart. So separate all those pieces back there and there. You can get this out of the way that came undone anyway and you can separate these front fenders and then you can get this up and this up in order to get the entire arms which are huge up and out and freeing up the arms is really the first step, all the other stuff is just in uh, kind of allowing you the ability to do that. There's a, another piece of spaghetti. You want to bring this whole section up and flip that part down. Continuing down, you want to bring the tire around, bring it down on a slider. The weight of it will probably do it for you and tab it in to the side of the uh, door here. And then bring the hand down, rotate it around so that these three tabs will tab in to the wheel. And then bring this little piece out and around so that it forms up on this side. And then bring the door down and around on this side and then collapse the kind of elbow bicep area. So same on this side, down or up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, select start. Bring the tire around and down and then tab it in. <clears throat> Rotate the hand around and you can move the thumb, push all of this into the wheel, bring this piece up, fold it around, bring this door panel back and around, and then collapse here. And that's the arms. Now we're going to bring up this whole section here, free it from the, the top bring sort your arms out bring this front guard here down angle the two front pieces of the bumper up bring the head forward and then you kind of have to see it. this piece here is like this so this whole section is on one hinge including this piece and then the head itself is attached to this ball peg, which is on its own <clears throat> uh, hinge. And it's a very, it's a more tightly tolerance and the head has a tendency to pop off. All right. So I'm trying to get you to see this here. Now we need to collapse this. We'll bring the wings up and we're putting this tab here into there. And we're also angling the front chest into this little black section here, which I believe is die cast. Get our wings up. What's going on? 
there it is. And at that point, <clears throat> make sure the head is up. This piece comes down and tabs in to there. The wings collapse or the, the windows collapse. And then the back of this tabs in to there. Well, it just like clips on. And that is the upper body, I think. Uh, these, I think these separate. Yeah. Here and here. I also want to say that for the instructions, they have the light bar swiveled out. And I don't, I don't think that adds anything. And I don't think it looks as good as uh, just keeping it together. So I'm keeping it together uh, because I think it looks terrible and I don't really get the point. Now for the lower body, split the legs. You bring this up almost like a combiner and then down. And then on the back here, this comes up on a double hinge, rotate inward 90 degrees. And then this section comes around on a hinge and tabs back into the calf. Bring the foot down, spike up. Same on this side. And up on a double hinge, rotate inward 90 degrees, rotate outward 90 degrees foot down, spike up, and that is this guy, <laughs> good night. All righty, let me get him cleaned up, we'll take a look at him. So just from the giddy up, my main issue is the proportions and how long the arms are. If you look at this guy here, his arms aren't nearly as long. Like, they end at about here. Like, I have his arms out to the side. If you bring him down, I mean, he can tie his shoelaces while he's standing up, you know? Like, it's it's... That's not okay. So from a design standpoint of the toy, just in terms of likeness to the character that he's supposed to represent, I don't think it's done extremely well. There are other parts of it that are done better. Like I think that the head sculpt is pretty close. And I think that the, um, the kind of like, if you get him posed, you can kind of make the silhouette pretty close. But yeah, that's, that's an issue for me. And you know, not really for me cause I don't really care, but if I was into this, that would be an issue for me. All right. So the head, as you saw, was on a ball peg and it has a tendency to pop off of the ball peg. And then the chin beats up against the bottom of this. So you get limited articulation down, you get good up, and then you get side to side. There is all sorts of gold, silver, and blue metallic paint on the head, which makes it look good. And then we have red paint inside the eyes. The red paint isn't very vibrant and the like the kind of eye hole for lack of a better term isn't really pronounced so you have a tendency to, to have the eyes lost like I, I don't even know if you guys can see them as they are but trust me they're there and he can his jaw has some articulation up and down so that's fine I suppose you can rotate these wings here to kind of get whatever sort of bug robot look that you want and the shoulders are ratcheted and then there's an additional hinge here I feel like that probably should lock into place and then you should just be able to use the ratchet um, but it still doesn't ultimately affect the articulation positively or negatively it just seems like it's a bit redundant so and actually if it did stay in position you have an easier time manipulating the ratchet and not uh, messing with the kind of shoulder line at least where the shoulder should be and I think like this one is low so it's a ratchet here it's a soft ratchet and then you get the hinge that's ratcheted here you get this kibble bit of mess that sort of beats up against um, and I can't get it any further up so it's almost nine actually it's more like 45 degrees so I guess you can get it a little bit more there's a little bit more that's almost 90 but then you have this like whole fender <laughs> Oh boy okay and then you have this right and then you have a bicep swivel that's nice and then you have a single hinged elbow and since it sits pretty much parallel to where the bicep swivel is you get the full range it's just not where the elbow should actually be so that's a problem for me as well and then you get this whole forearm bit which i feel like is where this toy ultimately fails 
Like this is the design element that makes the arms too long. It's the same design element that makes the elbow sit too high on the arm of the of the bot itself, throwing off the look of the arm. And the panel collapse mechanisms, or engineering rather, doesn't give it the look of an arm really whatsoever. Now, so I guess there's that. Now, you don't really get any articulation for the wrist because the wrist is pegged into the wheel. You could untab it and then sort of get your wrist swivel, but that's not, you know what I mean? That's not it, what, it, what it's intended to be. You do get a little silver paint accent there, so that's nice. And then you have the fingers that are painted silver, so that's okay. The fingers are all individually articulated, I believe. No, these are on a base pin knuckle. They could have been individually articulated, but they're on a base pin knuckle at a hinge and then the thumb at a hinge as well. And then you have this arm that operates the same way. For the chest, you do get a lot of paint accents. There's some black paint down here on this die cast. And then there's some silver and metallic blue for the headlights. That all comes across very well. And then you have a waist swivel. You do kind of have to manipulate him a bit in order to get to work around his sort of girth, so to speak. But, um, you know, I, I feel like a waist swivel doesn't need to be super pronounced anyway. As long as you get a little bit, it's fine. And I think that this is no exception. It's kind of, it's kind of fine. Not optimal, but fine. All right, you get these two bits here. You can have them down or up, whichever way you'd like. Nice metallic blue here, 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 and here. And then we have some gold and silver paint mixed in, which all looks really good on the sides too. Really helps kind of uh, give it some detail and some, some kind of pizzazz, as it were. You have universals for hips. They're nice ratchets, very nice. And they get you all the way out for the full Van Damme and frictioned front and back and pretty much get you the full Monty. So that's all good. You get a thigh swivel that's cut here. That's fine. You got a single hinge knee? No, it's a double hinge knee. The lower hinge is ratcheted, the upper hinge is not, uh, but it gets you a good range, so that all works fine. And then you have the ankles, which we have a tilt up, slight tilt back, and uh, like a proper rocker. So that's nice. That's done really well. And then there's the back of the figure. So it's uh, it's it's sort of it's sort of fine, right? Like it's not bad, but the lower body works a lot better than the upper body. Size comparison wise, there he is next to a masterpiece car. So I would say that that's fine as well. So the only thing left to talk about is the accessory. And in order to utilize it, you pretty much have to transform it halfway back. So we'll open this up, we'll untab this, swivel this around, and close that back. We'll bring, untab the wheel and bring that around. And then you take this and tab it into here. And you also, at the same time, wedge it around this tab. So there's a little bit of friction to it. And, you know, there that is, right? It's very heavy. Oh, you got to collapse this back up. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. You guys like that? I mean, I guess you have to do it. You have to find a way to do it, but, you know, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, we'll get them posed up and do some final thoughts. Final thoughts wise, my biggest gripe is that the proportions look far more exaggerated in the toy than they do in what the toy is supposed to represent. I suppose that's subjective, but I mean, if I get a measuring tape out and we measure both and it's off, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it is subjective. We got other issues here as well. The fact that this shoulder doesn't lock in... <sighs> Doesn't, I'm sorry, that's a side for a second. It doesn't lock into a position and then it, it's connected here. So it's tension here and then it's connected here with a ratchet. It makes it difficult to maneuver it properly. So that's an issue. And I also, uh, I don't like the, the use of the accessory 
because like all this stuff has a tendency to come undone and get in the way, especially with this sliding bar here, the wheel has a tendency to come undone. And as you saw, you know, it, it, it didn't take much for this to, to really pop out. Plus with the weight of it, it affects the elbow. So there's just, you know, there's just friction issues in, in regards to making it work. I also, like as I've gone to manipulate them, I have found that I, I, I would have wanted more of a waist swivel. I know I forgave it when I was going through the figure. I know I contradicted myself. Look, I don't need that now. As I was going to mess with the figure and pose them and take pictures and stuff, I had issues in really kind of getting a dynamic pose going uh, because as you go to manipulate even a little bit, it has a tendency to pop this hood out of his back and everything else. So it, it just, it ends up messing with the general aesthetic and solidity of the figure. So it's just, it's just not the best. Now, for my purposes, like for my sensibilities, right? Like I think this is a silly design. I don't think it works. I don't think it feels like Transformers really at all. It feels like a, a giant insect robot monster, but that's just my thoughts on it. That being said, I'm A-OK -okay if they continue down this line because it's just money saved for me and I like having money. So it's, it's all good. But fear not true believers, if this is your thing, there is plenty of good here. The engineering is really interesting. I think it kind of jumps the shark in the forearms, but that's that's my opinion on that. But nonetheless, all of the engineering is pretty interesting and relatively effective. I think that the legs translate extremely well. Like I can definitely see growth there and it has more of a definite shape in the legs as well. I think the alt mode is perfect and the paint where it is applied is applied well, beautifully clean and metallic, gives it a very good looking finish uh, where the paint is applied. It has a good weight to it. The materials feel good. There's good hardware with the ratchets and everything. And even most of the friction joints are friction intolerance well. And it has a decent enough presence for what it's trying to be. So it's a recommend for me, but it's a soft recommend. I still don't think they've topped Bumblebee. And I have to say that there is something about this that still doesn't quite feel like a masterpiece. I don't think any of the movie masterpiece figures have topped Unique Toys Peru Kill, which was their lockdown. So all things to think about. But yeah, soft recommend for me if you're really into the movie designs I think that you'll enjoy this well enough I think that the the accessory specifically you know looks cheaper than what this toy actually is so I would recommend keeping that in the box but I think that ultimately he will satisfy this slot in your collection where he's supposed to stand thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care Now you guys may have already heard this story if you listen to Shattercast Uncut or Enter the Realm. Robert sent me a Cosmos to borrow. I took it to Pinkerton's house for a party. At Pinkerton's house, it was catered and there was Italian food there. Cosmos from MMC ended up taking some damage and there was evidence of some tomato sauce in the instruction pamphlet around the pages where the damage could have happened. So Robert, as like a Pink Panther equivalent detective, uh, started looking into it, etc., etc. So it's become a joke from him when he sends me toys to please not eat Italian food while I'm messing with them and please don't take them to any buffets, etc., etc. So I want to show you just how crazy this man is and what he sent me when he sent me this box with barricade in it. I took a peek, I saw what was in there, and then I opened it up on camera so you could see. Let's take a look at what Robert put in the box. 